look like a highlighter. Like a bright orange highlighter. Hey friends, today we are going to be building with some trending technology, one being OpenAI's API. It's a lot of AI and APIs. I've been tinkering around with their API and it is so fascinating what you can build in such a quick amount of time. So simple and straightforward. We also are going to be using GitHub Copilot today. I just paid for it, paid for the subscription just for you. Uh, so we are going to be using that as well. All right, let's get into it. Also, if you can hear in the background, it is like thundering out. There is a ton of rain. So if you hear any weird noise, that's what it is. Let's get to it. All right, I feel like I'm gonna keep you here for this video. It's a little different than usual. I'm recording this screen. This one will stay the same if you're wondering. Why is it not changing? But it is in the video. And right now, as you can see, I have up here OpenAI's homepage, introducing ChatGPT. Yeah, thanks, we've heard of it before. And also to Whisper APIs. So I, what I did and where I wanna start with is let's go through the documentation. Now you might be thinking, Tiff, that's not that exciting, but honestly, it's pretty incredible and I feel like the best place to start when using any new piece of technology is honestly following the docs. I know as developers or as builders, we often think, ah, the docs are so boring, let's just get into it. But it usually is the right place to go. So in the documentation here, let's go into quick start. This is always a good one to go to. So as we can he see here, um, let's scroll down. OpenAI has trained language models that are very good at understanding and generating text. So their API provides access to these models and can be used to virtually solve any task that involves processing language. So this, we are going to build a simple application. So let's scroll down to an example. So if you see here, introduction prompt, write a tagline for an ice cream shop and it will complete with different prompts. So it's pretty cool that you are able to interact with their language models. Once you have the basics down, you can build like your own mini chat GPT essentially or whatever you want to build. So let's scroll down here and let's get into, where are we going? Here, build your application. Let's use Node for this and let's start by cloning the repository copy, pull up a terminal. So what happens when I have too many things open. I was playing uh, Snake. Let's just terminate that. I did that the painful way, but that's okay. All right, so as you can see, my terminal is here. I'll try and zoom in just so you can see the terminal more clearly. And let's see, let's, inside, where are we? Let's go to our desktop. Always dangerous putting stuff in our desktop and do git clone. All right, and then we can see here, navigate into the project record directory and make a copy of the example environment variables file. All right, perfect. So let's open up our VS code because that is where we will be going to do. All right, I think what I'm gonna do is put this as half. Can I make this half and half? Come on. Let's do instructions as half. And then the other part of the screen will be VS code. I think that makes sense, right? All right, so then if we see here, what are they saying? They are saying to add our API key. So let's go into, oh yeah, we have environment here. And let's just change this to .env. We can take out the example. Now from here, we're going to need to find our open API key. And you can see here, I have a few secret keys that I've made in the past. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new secret key, which is secret. All right, now when you have your secret key in your environment file, let's carry on. So we, let's start by running all or installing all of our dependencies. So let's open up a new terminal, make sure you're in your project and go npm install. Perfect, now npm run dev and let's see what we get. This should open up localhost 3000. Okay, name my pet. So enter an animal, let's name as it says here, let's name a dog. Generate names. Oh, do I have to, I think I have to pay. 
Okay, we're back. We have input our credit card, which is always dangerous because sometimes it goes too much, but I really wanted to build with this and show you the power of it if you haven't tinkered around with it already. So let's go ahead and enter dog, generate names, super spot, mighty mutt, the amazing rover. I kind of like mighty mutt, but isn't that so cool? So if we go back to the tutorial, let's look at exactly what we did and they go through understanding the code. So you can see here, if we go into, Generate JS. Let's go and generate. Let's close this. And they're going through this code now. So you can see here, please enter a valid animal. Uh, where is it? Generate prompt specifically. So suggest three names for an animal that is a superhero. Animal, and then we have cat, dog, and then uh, capitalization, and we'll come up with other ones. So what else do they say here? Let's try and do another prompt. So this is pretty cool. You can see here already with this prompt, you could change it to uh, say cow or whatever animal you want and it will interact with your users. Let's do, let's try this. Translate natural language to SQL queries. All right, okay. So we are in node. I wonder if we can do it directly in here still. Hmm. This is all about the animal. Configuration we have here. Let's just try it. Copy. And let's go here. Open AI configuration. So let's take everything from here down. Delete. Take these out because we already have them. Right? Prompt, Postgres SQL tables with their properties, employee, employee ID name department, da da da. Give me a sec, I got an idea. All right, okay, we're back to the Name My Pet project. The SQL one was giving me a really hard time. So what I did when I was looking into it is something's going on with their API right now. There's so many people using their API and working with it that at sometimes it's very slow or down, it's just not, it's not perfect. So let's stick with this example. And one thing I wanted to really dive into is let's talk about how to use Copilot. So I have Copilot installed. Uh, you can see here on, in my VS code, it's right down in the corner, but you can see Copilot is there. And there's a ton of different things you can do with Copilot, whether it be to write a function. So for example, if I wanted to say, um, this is for a path, but you could say, uh, right, a function that generates prompt. And then you need to have the function kind of written out to start with. So say generate prompt, da -da, and then tab, and then it would continue. So that is one way. Okay, interjection in this video here, this is in the future, TIFF in the future. And uh, I have on screen here some code. I got the code to work. I realized what I was doing wrong. And honestly, this is what happens when you are genuinely learning and building in public. So you can see here, I have REPL pulled up. I uh, switched from VS Code, so I'll share as well. Uh, oh, my Chris microphone. I'll share as well the REPL so you can play along with it. But essentially what was happening, why it wasn't running is I was not giving it a specific prompt. So you can see here, I'm using the Text DaVinci model engine. And similar to the examples in OpenAI, there is the prompt we are giving it, the max tokens you want to use, different things like that. So down here in response, we're calling this function get response. And this one was an example that they gave for give me the text or the color based on a mood I am feeling or anything like that. So let's go ahead and run this. And this should return a hex code here. There we go, perfect. And this returns a really nice blue color, by the way. Um, and you can do anything here. So write, a, let's try this. I don't know if this one will work. I don't know if this exact prompt, but let's try. Write a SQL query for me that, um, yeah, sure. We'll return a list of all the users. Ghost, the ghost writer is working for me. Let's see. This might not work, I don't know. Yeah, so this is a very simple example, but now you can use it essentially for turning text into SQL to get different uh, color scheme, different hex codes that you want, anything you want. Really, the whole thing is you can prompt anything in here and it will return the response. So 
this is super cool. Right above this one here, get response. I am passing in my API key. I should put it in its own environment folder, but I'll share this link to this REPL down below so you can play around with it too. Once again, you'll need an OpenAI API key. That is free. You just might hit uh, your number of uh, tokens that you can use for free. So that's just a side note. Anyways. Just wanted to share, we got it working. Okay, let's dive into using GitHub Copilot. Honestly, if I'm being totally honest, I don't think I've used it enough to really appreciate it because thus far I've been using uh, Genie a lot, which I was having some troubles with uh, because my API key expired on it, but I really like it. It uses chat or it uses GPT-3, I believe. And it's just more user friendly. I think it's because I've been having some issues getting GitHub Copilot to show up in my VS Code in this panel here. But you can see down here it is installed. We have it right down here. No, I do not want to disable. I am paying for it $10.99 a month, I think, which is kind of crazy, but I just wanted to try it out. So one thing you can do is you can write comments and it will help suggest code for you. So let's do that in the use case of we have, say we didn't have this API key or we wanted to put some constraints around it. So let's do uh, check if API is configured, else give an error, okay? So then it's not going to necessarily just write out code for you right out of the gate. You still need to be able to code, of course. So let's do if configuration API key, and then I just tab here, enter. And then I kind of just go along through the prompt it's giving me, which is pretty cool. So we have, if there is no configuration API key, then please follow instructions else. And then it will kind of give some hints as well. Perfect. There you go. So it is helpful. Um, I think there are so much to uncover still with Copilot that I need to do because so far I've been, as I mentioned, I've been using this one here, Genie. I like their UI, specifically how you can add tests, find problems, optimize, explain. It's super user friendly. I need to update my API key for it actually though, uh, which I'm not gonna do in this video. But anyways, it's, I think GitHub Copilot is the way to go, especially for professional developers when you are going to be coding as you are, but then want some extra kind of help. I also been using REPL's Ghostwriter, which is exactly the same as, as GitHub Copilot. It is, I think about $10 a month as well. So you do have to pay for it. And it's one of those things that the more you use these tools, the better you will get. And it really honestly is not going to take over developers' jobs or anything like that, but more so it's going to help you build faster and more efficiently. And I think it's a good way to almost think of as a coding assistant or a, a, what is it? You're learning with it, meaning if there's something you don't know, you can ask it to explain the code to you or different things like that. So it is pretty cool. I'm not blown away compared to Genie or anything because I, I don't know, I just, I felt Genie was really good, but I think it's because I need to spend some more time with Copilot. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed going through that walkthrough with me. It is amazing the power that you are going to be able to really harness with these APIs and what you can build. All right, I'll see you all soon. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more building sessions together, for more uh, career advice and insights, personal life, you know, the whole, you know. My stomach's rumbling. I gotta go eat. Bye, everyone.